Prince, thanks very much for your time. Firstly, the series of interviews between the former president and his son, Tutuzane. In your view, what is it meant to achieve? Good morning, uh, Colin. Good morning to viewers at home. Look, I have um, uh, been following what the former president uh, has been doing, including the series of videos. Hmm. It is very clear that this is a well-orchestrated strategy by Zuma and his family, in particular his son, Duduzan, to salvage whatever image he thinks he still has, because he can sense that um, the South African public is very dismissive of his uh, record as a leader of the country over the past 10 years, mm. that he has actually mm -hmm. led the country to disaster. So he's really trying to spruce up his image and project himself as someone who should be thanked for whatever he thinks he has done for South Africa. Yeah. So we've listed in that intro the kind of uh, achievements that he says uh, his administration would have achieved. And these are, among other issues, for example, separating a basic education from higher education, the introduction of uh, the rural development department and the distribution of ARVs, uh, some people will agree to say, indeed, the former president did do well in as far as the distribution of ARVs in this country. But do you agree, though, with him that um, with some people talking about the nine wasted years, this is a propaganda in Zuma's view? It's actually naked propaganda. Um, if you look at the things that is mentioning, by the way, um, you cannot actually see practical results as a result of what the, 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 the former president has done. The separation of um, education into two departments. You um, ask yourself the question, what practically has it produced? Absolutely nothing. Has it improve the quality of outcomes of our education system in South Africa, mm -hmm. zero. What he has done, he has created jobs for two individuals in the form of ministers and officials working under, under those people. But let's leave that aside. That's not how you judge the performance of a leader, by the way, after 10 years. This is how you judge the performance of a leader. Mm -hmm. You look at the bigger picture. When you look at what used to be there before he took over the state, and what he left behind. And here's the, uh, the bigger picture. When Jacob Zuma took over the state, the state was fairly broken, but it was in a better shape when he took it over from Tabumbe. When he left the state, he left it completely broken. State-owned enterprises like ESCOM, state-owned enterprises like SAA, SABC, Dinel, you name them. Mm. They were completely broken. Mm. Money was stolen by Zuma and his friends, the Guptas. So that's one component of it. You can also look at um, the economy. Zuma left the economy completely broken. South Africa lost a lot of money under, under Zuma because the main business of government mm. under Zuma was actually looting. So anything that they could find, the thugs were out and under him. So there's no question about the fact that Zuma left South Africa in a in a very bad shape when he took it he took it over. Yeah. Corruption was so widespread. Yeah. The criminal justice system in the state was so broken. Even the blind could see. So there's absolutely nothing that is positive if you look at the bigger picture. Yeah. Uh, Prince, I've got to ask you about this because the most fascinating claim that's come out of these series of interviews is the claim about our current deputy president, David Mabuza, that he was flown to Russia for medical treatment by the president's son, uh, Duduzane. Upon his return, he spends some time at the Gupta compound. Your view, should the deputy president clear the air around these issues? Well, he doesn't have to clear any air by the way, because the air is too polluted around the deputy president. There is no South African who is informed, who has been following South African politics, who doesn't know that David Mabuza is a tainted man. 
all the allegations of corruption, of all sorts of dirty things that happened under him in Pumalang. They are in the public domain. So this is not Mr. Clean, by the way, who is now being sullied by a statement or two made by Duduzane Zoom. Hmm. This is a deputy president who is already known to be dodgy as far as I'm concerned. So there's absolutely nothing you can do to clean up uh, David Mabuza's name. This man has no name, by the way, to defend. So what has been revealed there, it mm. simply adds to what the public already knows, that this is a very dodgy deputy president. Are you Simple suggesting, are you suggesting <laughs> therefore, that uh, the skeletons in uh, Mabuza's cabinet might possibly come tumbling out in the not-so-distant future? There is no question about it. I mean, the skeletons have, have already come out, some of them, in the, in the uh, interview between Zuma and Duzan. Uh, some of those, I mean, that he went to Russia, by the way, we have always known. Mm. Um, um, that he went there for medical, medical treatment, we have always known. The bit we didn't know was that when he came back, he went to the Gupta uh, uh, compound. That we didn't know. So that's a little skeleton. But other bigger skeletons have been there. And I wouldn't be surprised if even more bigger ones were, were to come out uh, uh, around uh, Didi Mabuza. As I said earlier on, there is no sane South African who suspects that Didi Mabuza is a clean man. Mm. Prince Bachele, always good to talk to you. Thank you very much for your time Skyping with us from Johannesburg.